imagine this. Imagine in your classroom, uh, and I want to actually have real examples. We have three people. David talks about a waste management project. This is hypothetical. A waste management project in Ota in Nigeria, and he, in one of his classes in the term, he tells his students about this project, and they get to do some kind of assignment, project, questions, whatever. Okay, so this is from Nigeria. We have on the other side here Gilbert, for example, at Munza, and he's developing a case study that he brings into his classroom about waste management in Lusaka, for example. Okay, and then we have Trinus here. He also does. No, let's assume it's still waste. I just want to focus on one urban sector, focusing on waste. Imagine this. And you're teaching something about waste uh, from uh, in Johannesburg. Johannesburg. In Johannesburg. So we have three different oh. city perspectives. They're all handling waste. There's a bit of variation because Africa is not just one homogenous place. It's got challenges, different challenges, and the answers and the solutions respond to these challenges. Okay? So wouldn't it imagine this if in your classroom we are able to pull three case studies? Put it online. So now when you go to your classroom, in that one lecture that you talk about examples, you David can now speak to his example, but he has two other examples to draw from. Such an enriching learning experience that really opens the eyes of students so that they're not only focused on their own geographies, but they feel empowered knowing other African geographies. And it helps with employability. It's an additional skill, and it's an additional skill to be critical of thinkers which is what engineers try to do. And this is only one step in that direction, because a lot of what we hear is that engineering education in Africa is very theoretical. Students graduate not having the practical skills required in the workplace. And that turns them away from engineering and seeking employment elsewhere. So maybe this isn't the total practical experience we would hope, but is a step in the right direction of giving them some of this real world experience from a broader exposure. So, So we have an activity now. It's a chance for everyone to have to be involved, to have a say, to share their experience, and it's an opportunity to sort of bring out all these best practices for what I to is saying in terms of sharing this globally, finding a way to share it globally. So here's the activity. Do you want to help me? These cards over here, they represent those eight modules that make up that second course. Remember there are eight modules. Each one has a representative image to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my ability. That's, that's in the so as, as moderators, we might just go around the room as the conversations are happening. We allocate it into the
waste management. We have a few waste management. Okay, so we have three. Perfect. Land use, land use planning, neighborhood design. One, two, three, four. On the board about it, do you present it just as an example at the end of your lecture? Like what form are they in? Application. So is this like research, more research, or more in the classroom? Research, okay. Research. Research as well? Research. Research, that's perfect. So I would assume if it's research, there's a lot of data, there's a lot of analysis, evidence-based. It's not just someone's opinion, but it's an actual case study that's been researched. Okay, so I think this is the best kind, because then it's part of a research, maybe part of a journal. Does anybody have a case study in a, in a, in a paper that they've published? Okay, we're now going to go online, okay? And let's see how we can take these case studies online. So first things to keep in mind, and, and, I, and I have to also say that when I started putting the online course, I had a lot of training from our education technology office to educate me, to teach me and train me on how to take something from in the class to online. So I'm trying to share a little bit of sort of what I learned in the process. So a few things that I got to think of is how much time do I have to devote to creating this content? In my case, this is my project. So I have all the time. This is part of what I do, whether it's in the classroom or the project. So in terms of time, I have lots of time to devote to it. And not knowing what you're going to do is tricky because you don't know how much time to devote if you're very new to this. Okay? For some, it might be very time consuming. And we already know that a lot of you are already involved with teaching and administrative and marketing and, and all that other fun stuff that academics do. But maybe, I don't need an answer, but just something to be conscious of is how much time do you really have? Because this is going to be something that you use in your classroom, but you need to be conscious of the time you have. If you have one day, it will be very different than if you have one week to allocate to producing something. If it's something that exists, it would be a different time commitment than if something that is pulled from scratch. Another thing is, how technically inclined are you? How technically savvy are you? And I'll tell you why we need to know this. It's, it's just a reality. It's not to say one is worse off than the other. But there are different techniques to be used depending on if you're really technically competent and you can play around with all the software, or you'd rather not do that and you'd rather just sort of lecture in class and have a videographer just capture that, and that's it. So we want to make it easy. We don't want to superimpose the methodology you're not comfortable with. It'll work. It's sort of a little bit of a personality thing. You can be more comfortable one way than another way, more technically inclined. And how many videos are you going to be producing? In my case, I didn't know how many to start off with, but then by the time the first course was complete, we have a total of 28 videos. So, which took about eight months to do. So that's just the reality of it. But then it was my full-time project to do that. In your case, it would probably be one video because we want one case study. Of course, we're open to suggestion on how we shape this module, but at least the case study is what we want to come get across. Do you have any budget for assistance? In our case, our project was totally funded, so we have the budget to purchase software, to have an, an education designer, technologist, do some animation. We have the budget for that. We can't assume everybody does, but if it's just a time commitment or access to a certain software, that's something to be conscious of as well. Okay. Based on the projects that they worked with over sort of a three or four year period, so you know all these projects that I showed you that were part of the offerings of online uh, courses from engineering at the University of Toronto? They, they come in different formats. And the formats are, there's something called document camera. You have, a, you have a document and you write and there's a camera that comes on top and it shows as you're writing. Maybe it's more relevant to people who are doing equations, maybe not so relevant to us to actually write and have a document uh, camera capture that. 
Maybe we have chalkboard. Chalkboard is another example. Just chalkboard, no graphics. In the same way that you would do it in the classroom, you would just talk and write and talk and answer questions. So that's one way of doing it and have a video of that experience. This tends to be long because it's the full duration of the lecture. Online, we don't do one hour longs. They have to be smaller chunks. So we can find a way to break it up. There's PowerPoint and green screen. So that's this one over here. PowerPoint and green screen. This is a PowerPoint presentation. And the slides just sort of, you can see the slides. But then you're standing next to your slides. And so you can see the person talking and you can see the slides. Very similar to this setup here. I'm standing here, here are my slides, and I'm talking, and we're capturing that. Can you guess which one is my, my style in the online course? Can you identify? There's tablet, on location, chalkboard with graphics, PowerPoint with voiceover, tablet capture with voiceover. Can you guess which one? Absolutely. This one over here. This was the style that I used, okay, but there are various ways of doing it. We think on location for African projects would be the most exciting to be on location at a waste management site and describe what's going on and speak a little bit to it and then maybe accompany that with some slides. We think that would be great. We have, I haven't done it. I haven't been to exciting project locations, but I'm sure you have access to project locations. Some things are too complicated. Tablet animation, we don't necessarily need that. But we want to feature that case study in the best light possible. Now, this chart is actually Education Technology Office effort. So this is sort of the designers. And this is instructor effort. So guess where my, guess where my methodology stands? I'm right here. I'm right here. A lot of effort from the instructor minimal effort from the Education Technology Office. And I think it lends itself well to our context here because I cannot assume that everybody has access to these designers that can animate. And I just showed you an example where we didn't really use a lot of their help. It was mostly the instructor putting the PowerPoint slides, doing the voiceover, scripting it if necessary. So it's easy, those, those are easy, and this is my approach here, because it was less time from the education technology. This is sort of the most sophisticated, those two, because they line up over here. A lot of effort from an education technology designer. Tell us what you're thinking, and we can okay. work around that. I mean, maybe a proposal of where you plan on going, what you plan on video, so that we have an expectation, and we can certainly talk about it. Thank you. I'm just making an observation in response to Tanya. I think. Uh, our thinking, sort of the big picture thinking, is to achieve several objectives. So one is to get a few folks involved in experimenting with the model, right? So this first course or two is an attempt to experiment with the model, to see whether there will be appetite for participation, to see if we do generate something at the end of the day, there will be an appetite for uptake of these, these courses, modules, either in whole or in part. So it's not really, and we don't certainly don't expect everybody here to participate. Okay, to be fair, uh, if you have ideas that you know this is a case study that we could do, we could do it ourselves. We're happy to take that and, and try to drive that agenda as well. But I think part of it is is de-risking the whole model of collaborative content development, that, that to demonstrate that when you develop content collaboratively like this, it is more likely to be appropriate context contextually relevant, and hopefully that means more uptake on the parts of colleagues here, as well as colleagues who are not here, who may find it useful in Africa, as well as the University of Toronto, which there is a quite a contingent of, of university students, frankly, interest in the development in Africa in various, various related issues. So our ultimate goal is this will be something that's accessible to U of T students, as well as broadly throughout Africa, and at the same time, sort of agending, ag Sort of in a, in a way, it addresses the other agenda of sustainability. So it talks about areas that we're interested in, but we're also interested in debugging the model, 
de-risking de the model and finding out what actually works, how do we can affect, how can we effectively create a mechanism by whereby we can do collaborative content creation, collaborative teaching, and, and sort of collaborative dissemination. Okay, so hopefully that gets a, a, a part of your questions. Of course, uh, which I saw that just a question, uh, I said on mechatronics, in rural infrastructure development. Got it for two semesters. And now I'm a now prepared because I was very theoretical. They're not down to that after interaction with the communities. I'm done. That course is going to take place in our second semester, that is in January. And this whole of this semester coming in from August, I'm preparing for it. So I have the time. But I want that course now to be online based. Uh, and I've got two or three colleagues who have now joined me. And uh, so if that kind of time is okay, then I will prepare to contribute. My only worry is that initially I was thinking of how mechatronics could be attached to the sustainable infrastructure development. I'm just emphasizing that area to see the importance of miniaturizing things from huge hardware through mechatronics. So would that be of interest? Would that be good? Uh, because I have the time for this semester to do that. So in what you plan on producing, I think that's the conversation we need to have until the end. We end with a product that's actually useful. Yeah. yeah. It's in health, it's in water, yeah. it's in uh, uh, energy. You start, you know, spread out, but you just attach the electronics in those uh, sectors. In which case, it is very relevant and it is sector specific as well. Yeah. Which is uh, which is a great. video example. It was a case study, a case study in a way. I know a case of it, but it's like an example where we work on it. We have a case with questions and we have to analyze the case. Yeah. Um, the way I saw, and that's a good question, sort of defining everything before we start. And that's, I would assume I'm not innocent, I'm at fault. <laughs> um, a case study, in the way I would use it, is an example. Uh, but a, a real example. And in my course, I don't like to call them best practices. They could be best practices, but they're best practices in their context. But when I, for example, when I present the week on green buildings, we talk about what is a green building, how do you measure it, how do you do it, all the different rating systems for buildings. And then when I discuss global examples, I have a video example of uh, green buildings in Alberta. And why is it green? There's solar heating, there's the insulation, there's the energy generation, there's off the grid. So sort of talk about that. And that in itself is a case study about this particular housing in Alberta and Canada. And I also have an example, let's say, in Scandinavia and a sustainable housing there, green housing. So that's sort of my definition. It's an example to bring to practice what we talk about in theory. So it's like about a two-minute example or a ten-minute video or just... It, it's really up to you. Uh, when I put my videos for the lecture, I would, the, the advice I was given is that online uh, students prefer smaller chunks. Uh, the advice was between 10 and 20 minutes, 20 would be really long. Five minutes but I do have videos that are only five minutes long. Yeah, five but minutes definitely long. not as long as a lecture. And this is where the difference of in class versus online. It's not one hour long, but it's smaller chunks. If it's two minutes and you get your point across, which I find is a little bit too short, because by the time you say what this case study is, here is where it is geographically located, here's what you're going to explain. By the time you say that, that's already two minutes. And then you get into the actual details, then I would say five minutes would be a minimum, a good, a good chunk of time a maximum of 20 minutes and not more. I think that's a good time range. Five minutes, the attention span of students will be very short. Yes. Yeah, so five minutes like is like like a for today. And so you know what, and Tanya brought up an important point about that student health and well-being. We have to put the students first. Yes. And mm -hmm. students are very different from our generation. They learn differently, they behave differently, attention spans are different, there are distractions that are different from when we went to school. And factoring all that, in mind when we created, 
creates for a successful output, a successful product that it actually gets used. Because I've seen some lecture capture, one hour long. It's great when you're sitting in a lecture, but it's not great online when you have lecture capture online and you're just listening to a, a one hour long video. Internally, I think, uh, according to our systems, we would need uh, an MOU or MOA so that it would be easy for us because I'm interested. I can travel uh, and do the uh, on location post production. It's very interesting because to me, I think it can generate information beyond what you need. You can even write a book, you can even write a journal paper. But internally, we need to be clear. So I don't know if there are possibilities of having an MOU with UJ, for example and you guys. Then number two is your networks. How strong are your networks? For example, I want to go to, to, to Ethiopia. I live there, work there. Very interesting case studies are there, and, but I would need maybe uh, some support to get some of these projects are very political. For example, the Allied Trail um, project, which is huge and interesting. So I don't know your networks. For example, I would want to go to Cote d'Ivoire and do some sustainable energy system. Because I once worked for an African institute, would travel and would be received by the South African embassy, for example, before you do the project. So it was, it was easy to do the project. So your networks as well may support us if you want to go out, out of our countries to do the project out of interest and also to uh, publish something out of it beyond the, uh, the online program. So internally and also wherever we are going, I think there's need for those uh, modalities. As excellent as that sounds, thank you for that question. The quick answer is we do not have that kind of budget. It's a, it's a great video production if you're talking about travel. We don't have that kind of budget at all. But if it is travel within your vicinity, so if you're in the University of Johannesburg and there's a project in Johannesburg, then that is more doable. So think about the time because this is time consuming just to take it online, let alone envisioning this to be a movie, a Hollywood movie. We certainly don't have the budget for that, but we do have a little bit and getting some help from Education Technology Office. And personally, I, I looked at a few ideas and I thought the most efficient, the most doable, given the time constraints among everything else, PowerPoint voiceover, is very doable. With a little bit of additional graphics and animation, it is, and for those that are interested, I'd like to like, take my computer and sit down and do a quick thing just to show you what's involved, but that's the most efficient way to do it. On location, I would say is great. Let's save it for your own vicinity um, in the city that you're actually in right now. At least in a small scale, so that we de-risk it enough that more folks potentially adopt a similar strategy. Right? So at KNUST, for example, they had a whole production facility like this. The video production, they were doing video capture, all that stuff. Right? So if your university is interested in trying it out, for example, you would perhaps lend you some guidance and support at the early stages of what it might take to set up a system like that, as well as you know, selectively participate into new modules and so on. Okay, but we need support. So we have to collaborate with somebody from the UK. But the other support can also make enhance the possibility of getting those funds. There's a lot of money there. Yeah, we can. Well, we've done it before. Our scholars know that we put an application together okay. to try to get funds. We're waiting to hear back. Uh, David had a suggestion for something else. So Raheem's our proposal writer. And so. Absolutely. Absolutely happy to do that. that, that is the project, hopefully the project is here and we can help support you obtaining more funds if you can emphasize that you have experience, here's what you've done preliminarily to go online just to sort of demonstrate and seek more funding from your own organizations or your own universities or your own networks. Yes, that's definitely how we could support you. Yes. So there's obviously a lot of excitement um, and energy in the, in the room looking forward to doing such a collaborative project. I do hope that it is a collaborative project. I do hope this isn't a course that is a University of Toronto course, 
that is going to go online and that has our voices on there without any accreditation to the different institutions and folk who are contributing. So I do hope that that has been considered. Um, for many of us, we would in fact need to go and get MOUs regardless. I mean, there's no way I'm teaching for another course in another university and my university knows nothing about that. Even if I you know, might be in a senior position, I would still need to make sure that I have all the right ducks in a row. So I'm feeling a little bit, I don't know what, I mean, I'm, I'm glad there's energy and excitement around the room. But I feel like, maybe it's just me, I feel like I've missed four or five steps. I feel like I've been invited to be here. I feel like I've been invited to give ideas around um, case studies. And then as soon as I put down these ideas for case studies, I'm actually committed to making something happen with regards to these case studies so that the University of Toronto students can have sexy examples from Africa by Africans. So I'm feeling a little bit like we need to step back. We're not ready for this. I mean, if that is your program, then you need to give us your brain framework and deadlines. But we're not ready for this. And I'm not sure we're going to Oh, I'm not committing myself to doing this within this year. I have many other things, as I'm sure many, many of my colleagues have many other teaching commitments, uh, in and above many other commitments. So I'm not, this is not something I'm going to be working on in the near future. Because we run our department, we also run like compact learning. We've got the normal class where you teach for an hour. But we also have the compact learning where we have to download videos and audio students that like we spoke with Prof the other day, you cannot have 20 minutes or 30 minutes because there's also the issue of data that they have to get. So one needs to still do your normal class an hour. The challenge is to try to then have a summarized version of that for student to access online. If you're thinking of the camera, that data thing that you talked about, these structures, how are you going to present it? Some are so easy, others are a little bit more technical. So the academics have to find ways of how you convey almost the same material but with two different types of yes. media. And then, yeah, I also just had a, a query with this, uh, maybe just a point of clarification. With these instructors, I see you do have like the scholars, yes. and then you also have like other academics from other universities. What's the difference between the scholars and the others that may so, come on board? Yes. Thanks. Thank you. We have someone who's not here with us today, Fatima. Dr. Fatma Mohammed and uh, the University of Dar es Salaam. Gilbert sitting right next to you uh, from, uh, from UNSA. So these are four scholars uh, spread across Africa to get a good coverage. So these are specifically part of our project based on that. And actually the explicit purpose of having them as part of the project um, is to ensure, in fact, what Tanya is, I think, addressing, which is that it in the production of whatever we produce, that we produce some content that is most relevant, most useful for African students. So at the very first intake, our, our target audience is African students, okay? So as a side, sort of as a secondary uh, issue, the, the funds that we get are internally larger from the University of Toronto. We actively seek funding from all over the place, and we, we, we appreciate anybody who has RFPs or that we can, we can partner for you, with you, we will certainly consider that, okay? But the, we have to ultimately make a case that what we are doing is ultimately a benefit to the University of Toronto students. Having said that, there's no me mechanism for accreditation of online courses as far as we know at the University of Toronto. Still. So part of the challenge that we have is to produce some, some content that is also relevant there, so that hopefully in the longer term they will buy into, that they will offer as a secondary course, perhaps not this one, because there is a very similar course that the, 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 this is built on in the DDS one. But our thought, thinking, our thought pattern is to make something that is relevant to African students first and foremost. And the reason that the scholars are engaged in it, and we have active meetings every couple of weeks or three weeks or four weeks, we have active meetings with the Zoom, we interact online, we exchange documents, ideas, opinions, all of that, is to ensure that, because it's fully realizing that if you produce something that is not relevant to people, people will not use it, right? So it's got to be relevant to people, and it's got to be collaboratively developed. So if, we, if it's collaboratively developed, some course that you have input into, into the design, into the production of, 
perhaps then you're more comfortable understanding how you might use that in your own classroom. And if four, five, six, seven professors do that, hopefully that demonstrates that the project can be, can be successful, then we can get into replicating the model for other fields, for other topics, for other, other things. So this is as much an experiment as it is of producing something that is tangible and that is valuable to students in Africa. Say, so I'm just before we end this part of uh, the session, and I encourage you to look at the existing course, the four modules, skip to the African examples, and see what's there. What's there is based on my research. So this does not include any contribution from anybody in Africa, and it was just based on my research, and I have these African examples. They are pulled from the World Council for Sustainable Cities, they're pulled from Arab reports. They're pulled from Siemens uh, Index on Sustainable African Cities. They're pulled from existing resources. So I encourage you to take a look at that to see what's already there. For, and, and the syllabus that I have for that existing course only shows me as the instructor. And that's how I also pull my global examples. For the second course, you will notice in the syllabus that you have, the instructors are not just me. It's the whole ESCA team, it's ESCA scholars, and it's anybody in this room that is willing to contribute. So when you write an idea down, those case studies down, you are not bound in any way. This is not binding in any way. It's just a suggestion. If you don't have time to contribute that case study that you suggested, it just does not get included. Nobody's going to take it and do their own. We won't have the data. We won't have the example. You are the holder of that knowledge when it comes to that case study. Okay? All right, and with that, I will stop here, and I'll turn it back to Franco so that we can at least write down the names of all the case studies that we've generated. Maybe, do you want to write down or shall I write down? I'll write, I'll, I'll write on the flip chart, and if you can just identify just the name of the case study, Energy Project in Kigali. That's it. That's all I need to know. And uh, and the city, and the city it's in. And then by collecting those cards again, if we have enough case studies, then I'll follow up with you one-on-one -on -one to see what sort of vision you have, what sort of initial data you have to work with. And we'll take it from here post-DIY, post going back to Toronto and then really sitting down and having this dialogue. So because then we actually demonstrate this connectivity and networking that's happening. Yeah. I think it's good to work on that. I want to make it as easy as possible, but one thing I also mentioned is that we hope this is something that you already talk about in your classroom. It's not something that you're going to do from scratch. It's something that's already in your classroom and doesn't require too much effort to pull together. At least that's what I did for my course. It's something that I already talked about in the classroom. I didn't do additional work to pull it. I have to cheat. I don't know many. Uh, I went online. I look for. So the one I have is future African cities. And, and two things that I kind of found after about 10 minutes or so. Uh, one is uh, Kigali, Rwanda, which they call themselves the cleanest city in Africa. Uh, they have a very fast growing population. And they have an ambitious expansion plan with an impressive sustainability effort by some commenters. Um, I haven't been able to delve into it, but I thought maybe that's uh, a good potential case study to look into to see whether what is that plan, what is that vision, and how they, they see that unfold. Uh, the second case study, which I found fascinating, and hopefully folks from Nigeria will know more about this, is the Equatlantic City of Labels. Yeah, that's the future city. I have that. You have that one as well? I have that. Yeah, so what I read was it's a land development, it's a landfill development uh, sort of scenario where they expect to have about 250,000 people on site and will be solely powered through self-sustaining energy technologies. So those two are the most basic, sort of fascinating to that okay. So uh, we have lunch uh, scheduled at 12.30. So we don't need to get into the details. I would trust that you are an expert in the case studies that you're suggesting. So maybe just the name and the city, and we will share this with everybody. Uh, maybe I'll type it up or take an image of this. You just need to write your name. Huh? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
conclude the uh, okay, initial okay. 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 Also, we find some data that we find that we have to manage it. Yeah, looking at the population growth, uh, the demands, and uh, looking at things, but this means the lots of the importation you know, coming into the country, and even to Lagos, particularly, great consumption, huge waste generation, the sanitation issue. And uh, looking at that, the thing that comes to mind is uh, how do you, uh, you know, just, uh, sustain, you know, the system by way of managing you know, the waste and the issue of sustainability comes into play. They talk of planning and also efficient comes into play as well. Then the concept of the reduce, the reuse and the recycling of you know, uh, waste management comes in. So and Lagos State has done a lot currently and by virtue of the information that we have, uh, I know you talked about uh, 2100, that's the year to come, but I was looking at 2050 when Lagos would be the third most largest in the population in the world. Because currently uh, Lagos is about 20 million by way of uh, uh, population, and uh, in 2050, being the third largest is going to be heavy. Because by 2100, you said it's going to be 80 million from what statistics you give you at the time. 88, yes, 88 million. So maybe by 2050, maybe half of that you know, will be in place. That is one of the things that I talked about. I'm sorry, I, I hope I'm not rushing anybody, but just to be conscious of time, because to get through everybody's <coughs> examples, we have about five to ten minutes. Yes. So just the name, just the name of the example, and this is. Okay. Then the other one, I'm okay. looking at another project now. Water with water and stop water. Yes, almost there. So she got it. I visited. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> she was in the state. So we looked at um, thinking of water treatment, uh, water supply and distribution, and uh, how you can meet the demands of the community. But also, for the wastewater, we looked at the treatment, they do not have much of the water to use. Yeah, thank you. Um, my own is regarding sustainable energy systems and um, the projects that we identified relating to three uh, types of uh, uh, sus the sustainable energy production. Uh, one, the hydro, which is uh, the first place, is Kainji. The second place is Shiguro. Is that these names of cities? Yes, that yes, is one of the projects. And then uh, the name of the city is the So the project is Kainji. Solar? Kainji. 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 The name of the project is sustainable energy. So, so like solar? Is it solar or is it hydro? Yeah, that is hydro now I'm saying. Hydro. Under hydro you have three cities. Oh, okay. You have Kainji and then you have Shiroro. Shi. S H I. And what general area is this? In Nigeria. In Nigeria. How about I write three cities in Nigeria? Okay, fine. Okay. And then you have the solar now in okay. South Africa. You have the solar energy, which is uh, the ESCOM at Spring, uh, Springbok. Springbok, ESCOM, South Africa. And then you have also the wind farm in South Africa, also at Spring, Victoria. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I wasn't here. That's okay. I think I've learned one or two from. <laughs> uh, I've got a, I'll mention three. There is a project called, uh, it's a solar project, so PV. Uh, PV? Yeah, the PV solar project. There are two of them in the multi facility economic zones in Osaka. One is 52 megawatts and the other one is 48 megawatts. They are both funded by the European Investment Bank. Oh, no, no, sorry, the World Bank. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the investment bank company, yeah. and then there's one. Then there's one uh, which I will probably share with you. It's a DFID funded project. It's called Cities and the Infrastructure for Economic Growth. Um, it has two components in it. There's a, also in Osaka. No, this is a nationwide. Oh, nationwide. But to be specifically 
five or six selected cities uh, in the country. Osaka is one of them. Uh, this one looks at exactly what you're doing. Okay. Uh, how do you redesign the city's investment in such a way that uh, it, uh, there's growth in the economy, but at the same time, thinking of the population growth uh, in, the, in the country. And uh, Osaka has been identified for obvious reasons. Ikeja Green, or Urban Green. Ikeja is the capital of Lagos State. I K E J A. Okay, it's a uh, it's the capital, and everybody is moving there. Okay. And then they also want to create an urban green. The other one is Atlantic uh, Eco Atlantic, but alternative to all Eco Atlantic. And we look at it, and we start wondering why that was done. Uh, we have as a future African cities. It is in Lagos, New Lagos. Just a green measure based on that problem investigated, and that could be maybe a, as part of a virtual energy audit of a hospital, typical hospital in, in Africa or Botswana. Mine uh, are the futuristic cities, so actually still cooking and they wanted to put everything down. Thanks. Um, content 
and then a link to one of her lectures. So take a look yeah. at that. Yes. Practices and then imaging ideas and practices by Osaka City. Then the next one is land use planning and neighborhood design, which is uh, the case there is Osaka South Mount Facility Economic Zone. So looking at the study questions concerns Osaka South Mount Facility Economic Zone. Located okay, in the city of Osaka, just this one. <coughs> the southern edge of the city. Osaka South South Mount Facility Economic Zone. Oh. L S Memphis. Oh. L S L S dash Memphis. Um, there are two cases. Uh, one, I think, Shona mentioned earlier on non motorized uh, transportation no, within Jones. Uh, okay. Non motorized? Uh, transportation uh, within uh, Greater Jones Peak. Uh, that was on that Oh, was that the, is that the corridors of freedom or is this different? It's different. different. Yeah, and then the second one is is uh, mount use of built structures, mount use of built structures for food production, for example. There are gardens coming up uh, on top on roofs of some buildings in Johannesburg. And, um, how should our structures be designed? And, yeah. Uh, also in Urban green for health living, especially at the organic food for communities. Yeah, if you look at the communities, we, yeah, if, if, uh, this was not talking about the, 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 the top of structure buildings, but yeah, uh, that's also when you look at the communities where uh, people should survive, not survive on the, the supermarkets, but they can produce both by themselves. Look at the available space, available space which they can also use. Uh, use. Thank you. And is this uh, in square? Uh, Cape Town. Yeah. Although I'm, I'm not an expert, but, okay. but yeah, I think that's a very good way of uh, project. So under green building, I was thinking now with the life cycle of a building, looking at these R2P houses which they are building, uh, for those low cost house, houses, um, I was thinking now in the future, they, they constitute a very huge problem when coming to uh, renovation or refurbishment of those houses. Yeah. One, you should also look at the future, what will be happening for the hazards. So, what should be the, the cost of uh, renovating them uh, in the life? Yeah, I'm not sure whether they really uh, they think of the future, left of the side of those yeah, houses, especially they, they build them in. There are too many. Uh, but anyway, I'm not sure whether they make such kind of so, uh, we're looking at the definition. Where, where, where is generally before the housing? This is South Africa. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we're looking at also the demolition as well or the, of all buildings. Uh, yeah, how sustainable this is going to be uh, in terms of uh, Environmental sustainability. Uh, uh, innovative, innovative urban public transport systems. Innovative urban public transport systems where you integrate physically and electronically. Integrating physically and electronically. And South Africa. Um, Ethiopia and Tanzania, Tanzania as well. SA, Ethiopia and Tanzania. So 
fuel and steel. Then waste to energy, the other one. Waste to energy. Waste to renewable energy projects. Uh, that's South Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, SA, Cote d'Ivoire. Then lastly, geothermal energy. Geothermal energy, this is in Kenya. I've done something. Those are the two that I have. Thank you. Wonderful. Always to the point, Tom. Thank you so much for this wonderful effort. Guess how many we have? Unique examples. 27. Give yourself a pat on the back. We have more than so. These are great ideas. Whether you have the time, the resources, the ability to put it online, I think that's the next step. And that will require that communication and coordination with us even after we leave here, go back to our offices in Toronto, you go back to your universities and classrooms, and then we'll see how much time and what the proposal is. The aim is to get the second course online as soon as possible. And then turn it back to you so that you can integrate it in whichever way that makes sense in your universities and your classrooms. And we, we have an education technology office that can help with, with that to support making those visually attractive to students. If you don't mind, um, I, will, I will type this up and share this with everybody. Share this list with everybody because even beyond us, if you think something is interesting that you would want to invite a guest speaker, if you, anybody wants to invite Innocent to come speak at, in their classrooms, you know what Innocent is going to be talking about. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you so much. Um, we'll be breaking off for lunch now. We are here for 2 p.m. And uh, it would be appreciated if we could be here by 2 p.m. I think we've got more than enough time for lunch. All right, great. Thank you very much. We have you all. We're going to break a show 2 p.m. our time. <laughs> I will call back in there. We saw the, we saw the sky behind you suddenly get more and more light. <laughs> all right. Okay, we'll see you later. Very good.